Okay, let's get started. Today, very, very, very important day. We connect all three aspects, all three aspects you're learning together today. And I'm going to teach you guys a shortcut. Third hour liked it. If you guys are going to see a shortcut, you're going to say, Mr. Gens, why don't you teach us that right away? Well, every other year I've taught people the short way of doing it, and they've never understood it. So last year I taught them the long way to do it and then the shortcut. Now, it was the first year I've had people actually have success with this material. So don't yell at me, Mr. Gens, why don't you teach us that right away? The reason I did is because nobody got it before. But now people get it. So let's do a couple examples here. Your worksheet says solving quadratic inequalities. Now, there's two types of inequalities. This one is a quadratic inequality in two variables. If it's two variables, how many number lines do we have to have? Two. So we make a graph, and the graph looks like this. So this is what we practiced yesterday. We have to shade. We have to do all those sorts of things. We have y is less than x squared plus 2x minus 1. What's the first thing we find? Vertex. Is this in standard form or vertex form? Standard. So you find the vertex by doing negative B divided by 2A. What is negative B? Negative 2 divided by 2 times 1. You get negative 1. Now I have negative 1. How do I find the y value? Plug it back in. What's negative 1 squared? 1. 1 plus 2 times negative 1? Negative 1. Subtract 1. Negative 2. So when we plug negative 1 back in, we get negative 2. Question. Right up here. Let me grab it. So that's our vertex. So I'm going to plot that. Does it go up or down? Up, solid or dashed? Dashed. Be How do I figure out if I shade on the inside or the outside? What do I do? Pencil on the vertex. Y is less than, so I move down. Am I on the inside or outside? Outside, so I shade. The outside. Shade the outside. How do you like that? Okay. Any questions on that? Now, let's move to a different type of problem. This is a quadratic inequality in one variable. One variable. And what we did is we practiced interval testing to be able to write an inequality and make this work out. We have 0 is less than x squared minus 4x plus 3. So you tell me, are we looking for where this function is positive or are we looking for where it's negative? Positive. Why? Because the function is greater than 0. So we're wondering where is this positive. That's what we're asking ourselves. The way we determine that is we find our critical points that we test between. And we do that by setting our function equal to 0. 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 3. I factor that. What are two numbers multiplied to positive 3 to add a negative 4? x minus 3, x minus 1, so I have x minus 3 equals 0, and x minus 1 equals 0. Add 3, x is 3. Add 1, x is 1. So I take my number line, I plot 1, and I plot 3. Open or close circles on 1 and 3? Open. We're looking for where it's positive. We got to test points. What's a point to the left of one that you have to test? Zero. We plug in zero. Zero squared, 
minus zero plus three. Three, so it's positive. What's the number between one and three? Dos. Two squared is four. Minus eight is negative four. Plus three is negative one. Negativo. What's the number to the right of three? Four. Four squared is 16 minus 16 is zero. Plus three is trace. Positive. So, in the end, am I wondering where this is positive or where it's negative? I'm wondering where it's positive. It's positive over here, and it's positive over here. Is that a conjunction or a disjunction? Disjunction. How does x compare to 1? Less than 1. What goes in the middle? 4. How does x compare to 3? Greater than 3. Tower, what do you want? Did you stretch it? You were going to answer because you're a super smart guy. No, Dylan here. You're on task. That's good. Get rid of Dylan. What's up? Um, Grace, I, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Oh, it says that the function is greater than zero. See, it says that this function is greater than zero. So that means we're looking for its positive. Does that make sense? Kimmy? All right, you ready for the shortcut? All right. Here's what the shortcut is. The other day, we practiced doing this stuff by doing interval testing. Today, we are going to do it by graphing. And graphing sounds difficult, but trust me, it's much easier. And we start out with the same process. We do everything we did before to where we come up with x is 3 and x is 1. Then we took those and we plotted them on a number line. Open or close circle on 1 and 3. Open. Here's the trick. One and three. So this is the part you got to focus really hard for the next two minutes. One and three. What do those represent? In terms of the graph, what do they represent? X-intercepts, where the graph crosses the X-axis. So the graph is going to go right through those two spots. The question is, is this a graph that goes up or is it a graph that goes down? It's a graph that goes up. So watch. I draw my graph going up through those two points. Now I'm going to answer the question. Is this graph positive here? Positive meaning above the x-axis? Or is this graph negative here, meaning below the x-axis? It's positive. In the middle here, is the graph below the x-axis or above? It's below, so is it positive or negative? It's negative. So I, I don't I don't have to test intervals at all. I can just look at the graph. How about here? Is the graph positive or negative? Positive. No interval testing. I just look at the graph and I draw plus minus plus. Sydney, you always just do one. And then you just switch them every other time. Then you switch the others. Doesn't always work. Sydney uh, tests the middle, and if the middle is negative, she makes the outside two positive. If the middle is uh, positive, it makes the outside two negative. For our stuff in Algebra 2, it's going to work. But in mathematics, you can't just do that, unfortunately. It doesn't work out. So anyway, as you look at this, 
we did this to just find that it's positive on those outside spots. And so we can answer it the same way. X is less than 1 or X is greater than 3. So the difference is instead of interval testing, we just graphed it. And I'm going to do two examples with you now where we can practice this again and make it work out. What's up, Maria? I got the 1 and 3 from over here. Okay, so let's try one from scratch. Is this a single variable inequality or, or two variable? Single, because we only have x. If we had y, then it would be two variable. Mariah and Sydney got four spots up here. Each one's starting to have your names in it. Okay, so. Am I looking for where this is positive or where it's negative? Negative. Because it says the function is less than zero. So I want to know where it's negative. I set it equal to zero. Does it factor? Yes, very good. Zero equals x minus five x plus three. I set both those equal to 0. x minus 5 equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. So x is 5, and x is negative 3. I plot those on my axis. Open or closed circles? Closed circles. Let's have some fun. Closed circle, closed circle. Okay, does the graph go up or does the graph go down? The graph goes up. Why? It's a positive x squared, so it goes up. Positive x squared, so it goes up. Is the graph positive or negative here? Positive. How about here? Negative, how about here? Positive. And in the end, we're trying to decide where the graph is negative. The spot where it's negative, is that a conjunction or a disjunction? It's a conjunction. It's this space right there. So x sits between which two numbers? Negative 3 and positive 5. Which way do the arrows go? So we practiced yesterday, right? Beginning of class, we practiced writing inequalities again. X is greater or equal to negative 3, and X is less than or equal to 5. So do you like not having to do interval testing? Because I get tired of plugging in numbers. I like to just look at the graph. To me, that's easier. I get to see it. All right, we'll try one more, and then you guys can start your assignment. Um, make the 7 a negative. Make the 7 a negative. I wrote the problem incorrectly. Shari. <laughs> yes, it is true. Once you have your master's, you no longer make mistakes. It's pretty cool. You're right. It is. I am lying. I'm lying. Add 7 to both sides. We have to make this in equal to 0. 0 greater than negative x squared minus 3x plus 8. That's my inequality. Are we looking for where the inequality is positive or are we looking for where the inequality is negative? Negative. Because it says that it's less than zero. Where is the inequality negative? So now I set it equal to zero and I try to factor it. Zero equals negative x squared minus 3x plus 8. 
Does that factor? No factoring. If it doesn't factor, what do I do? Quadratic formula. The quadratic formula. This does not factor. You try as it doesn't. There's no two numbers that multiply to positive 8 that add a negative 3. You could take out a negative 1, but that's not going to help you. Okay, we can't work this through. Not going to work. So, yep, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by twice a. So I've got to work this out. Girls, what is negative b? Positive 3 plus or minus square root of. What's b squared? 9 minus 4 times a is negative 1. c is 8. Divided by twice my a value, negative 2. How many negatives are underneath the square root sign? 2. So will it be plus or will it be minus? It will be plus. The two negatives will cancel each other out. It will be plus. What's 4 times 1 times 8? 32 plus 9, 41. So I have 3 plus or minus square root of 41 divided by negative 2. So I have to make this into two decimals because like I plotted negative 3 and 5 over on the right hand or left hand side, I have to plot two numbers over here. So I'm going to take out my calculator. I'm going to punch it in and come up with a couple decimals. 3 plus... Square root 41 divided by a negative 2. It's like negative 4.7. And then I'll do 3 minus the square root of 41 and divide that by negative 2. So I got negative 4.7 and positive 1.7. Open or close circles? Open. If you look at that graph, negative x squared minus 3x plus 8, does that graph go up or down? It goes down. So I'm going to draw the graph going down. So if we look to the left of negative 4.7, is it positive or negative over here? It's negative. How about in the middle? And in the end, are we looking for the area where it's positive or are we looking for the area where it's negative? It says we are looking for the area where it is negative because it is less than zero. So the area where it's negative, is that a conjunction or a disjunction? Disjunction. How does X compare to negative 4.7? Less than negative 4.7. Or how does it compare to 1.7? Done. So I did two examples. Well, we did actually five kind of examples here. But two directly off your worksheet. If you look at the back side, I've given you guys uh, six problems to do. And then you have three problems at the bottom that involve graphing. This is uh, can be a lot of work for some people. If you don't get it done, don't worry about it. Uh, if you, or that is if you don't have it done by tomorrow. But let's make sure we have it done uh, by Thursday. Thursday. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Travis. We hope that your vacation is fun. It's sunny here, and we're going on the track to run.